So what is the difference between bushcraft and survival? Welcome back to the channel, everyone. So with that opening, obviously, you know what we're talking about today is what is the difference between bushcraft and survival? Now, I had this question posed to me by someone who doesn't practice bushcraft or survival or really know much about it. So I kind of got my gears turning. Uh, I'm just out here today, uh, this morning, actually, to get a few miles in, uh, just go for a quick hike before I work a little bit later in the day. Um, with it being morning though, I feel like there's something missing. We need some coffee. All right, so we got some coffee brewed up. Still something missing, be right back. All right, now that is more like it. You know, a good thing I found a different path, or this actually might be filled with Kool-Aid. All right, so now that we got some coffee brewed up here, just taking a little break on this, this morning hike here. Uh, <clears throat> bushcraft versus survival. Now, like I said, this question was posed to me by someone who doesn't practice bushcraft, who doesn't pr practice survival skills, who has very, very little, pretty much almost no knowledge in those categories. Uh, they do some camping, do some backpacking, but don't do bushcraft or survival. So I kind of got my gears turning, you know, for people just getting into both of these realms, hell, even for people within these realms, sometimes it's hard to differentiate the two. So I just kind of want to give my little, my take on it, my opinion. Um, obviously with some of our previous videos, we've talked about my past experiences as an instructor, as a student, so forth and so on. Um, you know, there's a saying out there that regression leads to progression. And that's what we're really aiming to. I just don't put out videos with no coherent um, thought put forth. You know, there's usually a game plan with the videos I'm putting out to lead to something. So this, like I said, this question was asked to me probably two, three weeks ago, um, kind of been kicking it around, kind of how I wanted to go about talking about it. So right off the bat, for me, bushcraft and survival, and I've always had this mindset, is really one in the same thing. Now let me explain that. Bushcraft, obviously we're making things off the landscape. We, hey, we need a baton, we need to make a container, hey, we need cordage, we need a way to start a fire. We can create all those things off the landscape utilizing bushcraft skills. Survival, on the other hand, you know, hey, we are stranded with just a knife. Oh, hey, we are stranded with just our kit. And now we have to figure our way out of that situation. Now, there's definitely overlap and there's some definitely distinctions between the two. Don't get me wrong there. I'm not saying that they're all encompassing one thing. There's definitely caveats to that. Uh, but I believe there's a big overlap between the two because you look at you if you're in a survival situation, you may or may not have everything you need, so you are gonna have to make things off the landscape. Vice versa with bushcraft, we ain't going out there with nothing, right? We usually have some sort of kit, we have some sort of tools with us, and that's where that crossover comes in, you know? You know, we're gonna carry what we need for what we're intending to do, uh, but also have a few things in there in case things go off the rails and now we're stuck out there for the night couple nights hell for some people week and a half or weeks so that's where really that crossover of the two starts to come into play so now this really isn't something i've ever at least i don't believe i've talked to uh, extensively on video anyway it's basically my philosophy when it comes to bushcraft survival skills outdoor skills wilderness skills hell you look it up online you're gonna find a million one ways of describing it People love throwing labels on people or things. So just the human nature. 
But my philosophy has always been surrounded around, around one thing, and that is traveling as light as possible with as much as I'm going to need. And if I need to improvise some things along the way, I have tools or I have pieces of gear that are going to allow me to do that. So one of the things that I like to study that's outside of survival and outside of bushcraft and camping and everything like this is I read a lot of military history. Uh, and one of my favorite topics to read about are the Mac VSOG units in Vietnam. Now, if you're unfamiliar with that, those units usually consisting of, you know, anywhere from four to six guys, sometimes more depending on the mission. They had to go out with everything they're going to need for might be three days, might be extended longer than that. It was very fluid, let's say. So reading that and kind of growing up reading about that, uh, my grandfather was in Vietnam and hearing a few of his stories while he was alive, you know, kind of planted that seed in my head. You know, and as I got older, got into bushcraft, reading about bugging out, reading about prepping, you know, that same theme has always stuck with me. You know, I want to carry all the necessary gear that I want with me to stay as comfortable as I can, but I don't want to be hauling around a 100, 200 pound backpack because I'm a pretty fit guy. Uh, I can haul a lot of weight, but I don't want to haul a lot of weight. That's a lot of times, you know, you see me use a lot of ultralight gear. It's not necessarily that it's better than stainless steel or anything else. It's I'm trying to keep my pack at a manageable weight, manageable size. Don't want some monster on my back. Um, unless it's winter and that's a whole diff discussion. But my theory or my philosophy with um, survival, outdoor skills, all that has really stemmed from traveling light as possible. When we look back in history, you know, look at rangers, we look at scouts, we look at um, all these units that had to cover a lot of miles. They didn't just go out there with just a knife or just this. They carried a few different things with them that was going to allow them to be as comfortable as possible while they were out there doing whatever they were doing. All right, so I bring up all this because it really stems from that question of what's bushcraft versus survival. And now, yes, there are some differences to them, but for me personally, I feel there's enough of an overlap that I really, I really think of them more as one thing because skills transfer back and forth. You know, I talk about kind of my philosophy when it comes to the outdoors, survival, all that. You know, I want to stay light, agile, but capable and prepared for anything that may happen out there. For example, when I pack up, go on a trip or anything like that, I usually carry some creature comforts with me. Uh, like for one, I carry a thicker pillow, so a little bit more bulky, but it helps me get a good night of sleep. And we think back to Nesmec and Kepbart, they weren't out they weren't about going out there and suffering. They wanted to smooth it. You know, even with them, they knew, I don't want to go out to the woods and work. I do that enough during the week. So that's something that I just want to try to get this across with, you know, just this quick video. And hopefully this didn't turn into a huge ranting, rambling video. But it's important to talk about the mindset behind what we're doing. You know, like I said, you can look up bushcraft skills, survival skills, outdoor skills, wilderness living, wilderness skills, Google it. You're going to find a million and one people. Everyone thinks their answer is the right answer. But like I've said, always said, you know, learn as much as you can from as many different people you can. And then you can kind of narrow that down to what works best for you. I've done that over my years. You know, obviously I spoke to my experience as an instructor, as a student, so forth and so on. And, you know, I took things from that, that, all right, that makes a lot of sense. Got rid of some, some stuff that just, it doesn't make a whole lot of sense to me. Why would I even want to bother doing that? You know, we're constantly refining our processes in life, whether that's at work, in our daily lives, at our home lives, even more so while we're outdoors. You know, read as many books as you can, watch as many videos as you can, you know, help a lot of those, or get a lot of those ideas floating around in your head then you can ruminate on those. You can think about them, come back to them, think about them, and then kind of refine them down to, all right, this makes a whole lot of sense. I'm going to do this. Uh, it don't make a whole lot of sense. I'm not going to do that. You know, Bruce Lee said it best, you know, 
absorb what is useful and forget the rest you know so that's all i really want to shoot with this video while i'm out today and this morning psych uh before i head into work is you know this idea was brewing around in my head or this question was brewing around in my head and i just kind of wanted to get some thoughts down on video um so hopefully inspired one of you to kind of start thinking about your approach to the outdoors and what bushcraft and survival mean to you in the comment section down below let me know your thoughts kind of your approach to bushcraft survival outdoor skills however you want to go about calling it i always think we get a lot of good useful information from the comments um, that's one of the things i'm happy with my channels majority of the comments are positive do get some asses in there but i always remember my one rule with, for the comment section has always been you act like an ass you gonna get treated like an ass but with that do me a favor hit sh like share and subscribe take us more eyes on what we're building here helps bring people into our community so we can learn together and grow together as always, this has been Paul with Adaptable Survival. Adapt your mind, your body, and your gear.